Hi, and welcome back. We're still talking about functions. What we're going to talk about now is the algebra of functions. We're going to add them, we're going to subtract them, we're going to do multiplication, and we're going to do division. So suppose I've got two functions. I have the function f, and I have the function g. If I would like to do the sum of the functions, the notation is f plus g of x. That means I'm going to add the two functions. Or I might see it as just f plus g. And they're assuming we're functions and we're going to add them. Or we might have it as f of x plus g of x. And the adding or the sum of functions is exactly what you would expect. We're just going to add these two functions, combine like terms, and be done with it. But we do have to talk about the domain. So let's talk about the domain of f plus g. And I like to sub subscript it f plus g so that I know I'm talking about the domain of my f function added to the domain of my g function. And what it will be is the domain of f plus, or excuse me, not plus. It's the domain of f intersected, or where they overlap, of the domain of g. So let's just start out with two functions. We're going to start out with f of x is equal to x plus 3. And we're going to say g of x is equal to x squared plus x minus 4. So if I would like to do the sum of these functions, f plus g of x, this is just going to be x plus 3 plus x squared plus x minus 4. And just kind of clean stuff up, put them in descending order. We get x squared plus 2x minus 1. There it is. The domain of this is where they both overlap. Well, the domain of f, if we look at this, well, there's no restrictions, there's no square roots, there's no fractions with an x in the denominator. So this is x, such that x is a real number. We look at the g of x, same thing. There's no square roots, there's no x's in the denominator, there's no fractions in particular. So the domain of g is equal to and uh, we'll do it with the set notate or the interval notation negative infinity to infinity. So my domain here of f plus g is equal to I uh, will do the interval negative infinity to infinity because they're exactly the same thing. The overlaps are exactly the same thing. So, let's look at difference. We have, for the difference, it's all the same thing as subtraction. We have the notation as f minus g of x, simply f minus g, or f of x minus g of x. And it could be the other way around. It could be g minus f of x. It doesn't matter. The domain of this is going to be like before with the sum. This is subtraction here. Is the domain of f intersected with the domain of g. So let's do let's use the same f and g from above. 
f of x is equal to x plus 3, g of x is x squared plus x minus 4. So this will be x, oh, I forgot it already, x plus 3 minus, and don't forget to put this in brackets, x squared plus x minus 4 to remind yourself to change all that signs on whatever it is that you're subtracting. So I subtract, change my signs so when I get negative x squared. I have a x minus x, so that becomes no x's. And I have a 3, and then it's a minus minus 4, so it's positive, so it's 3 plus 4, which is 7. The domain of g and the domain of f before was exactly the same. They were the all real numbers. So the domain here will not change. Let's go on to now the product or multiplying them. So with the product, we may see it as f, g, right next to each other, of x. We might see it f, g, just by itself. Or we might see it f of x, g of x. Your domain here of your product, d of f, g is, surprise, surprise, f intersect the domain of g. Let's use different ones this time. Let's use f of x is equal to, that's an equal sign, not a z, or a 2, is equal to, we'll do 2, over x and g of x is equal to x minus 1. All right, so let's talk about our domains here. Here, my domain of f is equal to any number I want, provided it doesn't make it a, a non real number, and if x was 0 in the denominator there on that f, then that would make that a non-real number. So x can't be 0. Take a look at this other one here. We've got, oh, no issues at all. There's no square roots. There's no uh, fractions with x in the denominator. So we know here, we go from negative infinity to infinity. And this is a d of g. So if I want to do the multiplication here, or the product, I just do f of g is equal to 2 over x times x minus 1, which I can just write this as 2 x minus 1 over x, and that's as good as it gets. The intersection is the domain, the intersection of both f and g. g, there's no issues. g, you get everything. F you don't. You don't get zero. So the intersection is all those numbers that they both have in common, which is everything except for x. So x such that x does not equal zero. Okay. Now let's look at the uh, quotient or the division. With the quotient, or division, we can write it as simply f divided by g of x, f divided by g, or f of x divided by g of x. 
Now, domain is the first time we deviate from the other ones. The domain of the quotient of our two functions is equal to the domain of f intersected with the domain of g. And this also intersects with x such that g of x doesn't equal 0. Okay? So, let's take a look at what we had before. We had f of x on our previous example is equal to 2 over x. We had g of x is equal to x minus 1. If I have the f divided by g, I have 2x divided by x minus 1, which simplifies into 2 over x, x minus to be a minus there. One. My domain again for my f here x cannot be zero. And then on here there are no restrictions. Unfortunately, when I take a look at my end result, I have the x minus 1 in my denominator. So my domain of my quotient is the overlap between f and g, which we know is any real number as long as it's not 0. But we also have to add that we have to toss out any x value that will make g of x equal to 0. Any x value that will make g of x equal to 0 is 1. So our domain of f divided by g is equal to x such that x does not equal 0. This comes from my f function and positive 1. And that comes from right here. Right here it says I can't. I have to exclude any x that makes my denominator function, in this case g of x, equal to 0.